Hi, this is Dr. Tom Ball. I'm a trombonist and euphonium player in Denver, Colorado. And this uh, video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, trombone sizes. Um, this is always a, a big mystery to a lot of my students and their parents when they're uh, moving maybe from a student line instrument to uh, an upper line instrument. So basically, I'm gonna talk about, uh, there's, there's four, basic sizes of trombone that are most commonly used. I'm not talking about alto trombones or soprano trombones or any of that stuff, but uh, the ones that are all the same length, okay? These are called tenor trombones, and there's three basic sizes of tenor trombones, plus there's a bass trombone, which is also the same length. These are all pitched in the key of B flat. Uh, so when you unwrap them and stretch them out, they're all the same length, but they have different purposes, different uses, and uh, you need to know what's going on before you fork out a lot of money. I mean, um, uh, I'm getting a, another horn and know what you're getting into. Okay, so uh, the, the horn I have in front of me is a symphonic classical trombone. This is a large bore trombone. So this is a much bigger size than uh, the standard student trombone. Okay, I'm gonna get another mouthpiece to compare. One of the ways to tell the tenor trombone mouth uh, horns apart is to look at their mouthpieces. So um, now these are both custom mouthpieces, but we're not really fo focusing on that. We're focusing on the shank size. So you can see that this one here has a bigger shank than this one here. So if I compare them side by side like this, you can see this one's so much bigger, you could actually stick it inside a little bit, okay? This is a standard small shank. And this is a standard large shank for American horns, okay? The small shank horn fits student line instruments and also professional small bore trombones. This is a large bore trombone. It will only fit, uh, this large shank will only fit into a large bore or um, medium large bore or a bass trombone shank. So this is the shank and this is the shank receiver, so this shank fits in here. This is larger than this one. So if I put this small one in there, it goes all the way in there. It doesn't work. Okay. If you, if you have one of these bigger horns, don't use one of these with an adapter. Just get another mouthpiece. Uh, it's not a good, not a good plan. Um, okay. So the large bore tenor trombone, um, a lot of times people will We'll try to identify it by it having a valve and uh, this extra valve tubing here for the F valve. That doesn't make it a large bore trombone. What makes it a large bore trombone is the actual bore size of the opening of the tube, okay? I'm gonna get another trombone to compare it to. This is uh, a smaller bore trombone. It's con, or I mean, uh, King 3B. Um, if you compare these two side by side, you can see that this one here, the slide is a lot bigger, okay? So if I put it here, you can really tell uh, that this one is a lot wider, okay? The other thing is the difference is the bell, so I'm gonna put this up. The King 3B doesn't have that small of a bell, but if you compare them side by side, you can see that this trombone has a much bigger bell Obviously on my iPhone here, it's distorting how big the bells actually are, but um, the uh, small bore trombone only has a small shank adapter. Um, most of them don't have an F valve. The exception of that is a King. Uh, this King 3B is available with an F attachment. The King also makes a, more of a student line one I think it's called a 606, if I remember right. The 606 has also uh, a valve section, but the horn is not a large bore, um, and it's not really even medium bore either. It's just a, it's it's just not a, quite as small. So back to the th the three tenor trombone sizes. Going to talk about bass trombone today because I don't have one here. Um, there's the small bore trombone. The small bore trombone typically doesn't have a valve on it. 
small shank adapter, smaller bell section, lighter weight. Most of your student trombones are small bore trombones. Um, professionals will own a small bore trombone, usually for more commercial playing. So it's what we call our jazz horn. So um, this 3B is actually my jazz horn right now. I also own a smaller trombone than this one. I own a, a Bach 16. Um, that's a little bit smaller, has a little bit smaller bell. It's more of a quote unquote jazz horn than this one. Um, but your typical, uh, typical instruments made by King, which is what this one is, is the 2B, 2B plus, um, Jigs Wiggum model. Uh, those are all jazz horns made by King. The 3B is sort of just a little bit bigger than that. I'll talk about that in a second. Now then there's the medium bore trombone. The medium bore trombones that are available today from most of your music stores that are being pushed will have an F attachment section. Now again, this is a large bore trombone, but it'll, they'll look the same. Uh, the bell might be a bigger bell like this one. It'll have an F attachment. It might be multicolored like this one. Like, ooh, this is rose brass. Ooh, this is yellow brass. Got some silver in there. It looks like a, a kind of a fancier, right? Um, the medium bore trombone is one that would still have a small shank here, and that's how you identify it. Um, it'll look fancier. It oftentimes has this uh, valve section. I don't really know too many of the medium bore horns being sold, not, sold nowadays, new that don't have one of these, but you can get like an old um, Bach 36 that's a straight horn, that's a medium bore horn, that uh, it, it looks bigger. Um, they're pretty rare to find one nowadays, but you could find one. Bach 36 is an example of a medium bore trombone. Um, so that is what a lot of what we call step up horns are. Uh, the step up horns are ones that uh, they're, they're fancier looking, a little bit better quality uh, than your typical student horn. Often, most of the time, they'll have an F attachment on them and they'll have a small shank that's the key, the small shank. If it has a large shank, then it is a large bore trombone. Now, the large bore trombone has a specific function uh, in music, and that's more of a classical thing. Uh, I do not recommend that you get, you know, let's say if you're a parent or a high school student, parent buying for a, a high school student or a middle school student, or you are a middle school student or high school student shopping for your own horn, do not get a large bore horn unless you're taking private lessons and your private teacher says you're ready for one. It's just not a good idea. It's just, it takes a ton more air, a lot, uh, a lot more muscles uh, in your arm for holding the darn thing up because it's a lot heavier. Um, it just takes better trombone playing before you're really ready for this thing. So what I would recommend for parents who are looking to upgrade is to get to shop around for maybe a medium bore trombone um, or a medium small. Now, so I said there was three sizes, which is really, really generalization because there's actually more than that. Uh, my King B actually falls between small bore and medium bore. It's what we call a medium small bore. Uh, so it's, it's a little bit bigger than, than your average small bore horn. And again, it's available a lot of times nowadays with an F attachment on it. Um, so uh, that's, the, that's really what I wanted to say is, is you really want to look for a medium bore horn if you're looking to upgrade. And also, what is your interests? Um, if you're just looking for a better all-round trombone, a medium bore trombone is where it's at. Um, the bore size actually on a medium bore trombone is 0.525 generally in that zone, and a large bore is 0.547 inches, and then the small bores are typically 0.500.